Sansa should be just as upset about this as he was about the survey. This is wild to me. Okay, let's continue. <laughs> Hey guys, this is Jules with True Crime Reactions. Disclaimer. Everything stated in this video is my opinion and my opinion only. And just like everything else in these cases we discuss here on this channel, everything is alleged. Okay, so this morning I woke up to this comment and I already knew that it was coming because in yesterday's seven over seven hour live stream of the change of venue hearing, I believe it was during the lunch break, I popped this up on the screen so I knew that Brian was talking to them. So I knew that something was coming. I just had to wait a little bit throughout the day until I had time to sit here and react to it. Okay. Now I only listened to the first like maybe 40, 50 seconds of this. So I have no idea what else they're going to say, but I'm just like not impressed at all so far, but not shocked, not shocked. What do you think, Steven? Of course we'd rather stay in the top. Yeah. Just out of convenience sake and out of the fact that this is where it happened, this is where it deserves to be tried. It, it would be a big inconvenience for you all too, I mean. Yeah. Idaho's a large state. You're talking another 12 hours of travel. We wouldn't be able to go home at the same same day. It's, now, now you're staying overnight. And uh, like you said, this is the community that was, you know, this victimized. person, they victimized them and the justice deserves to be felt local and they they have a hand in it. See, and I don't believe that. Like, I really just don't. Like, I understand maybe, like I said, if you have roots in that area, then maybe so. But a majority of the people that were actually, like, affected by this are the college students that knew the victims themselves that are not technically local to that area. A majority of people do not go to college in their hometown. A majority don't. Like, a lot of them do, but a majority don't. People like to go at least, like, to a town over to another state you know those kids love to have a little bit of taste of freedom so a lot of them do try to find a school that's not so close to home that's just kind of how the human brain works whenever you're that age that's why i don't believe this like the university community maybe even though it was off campus it still was all university students so that does matter but i just don't feel like this is the case i think that maybe they've been victimized from the aftermath because of all the crazy media, the crazy YouTubers that have been in everybody's faces trying to get information, okay, the crazy hysteria, maybe. But the crime itself, I understand, like, the fear and whatnot. But I just, it's a bit strong. But that's also, like, the reason why this is not a fair location for this to be. Because you are literally doing no justice whatsoever to this case, State of Idaho. When you have no proof of anything and almost every single thing that you have been able to present so far has been torn to shreds or proven to just literally be non-existent, period. Leta is not going to do this case any justice. And the truth is the only thing that matters here. And that's what, that's what we believe in. And you know this area well. Um, you've been in court today, too, listening to the defense's arguments. Do you think they could find a fair jury here? We know they can, and we've we've actually asked and done the interviews ourselves, and they have to find 12 people plus some people on the side, you know. Some Did y'all hear that? Did y'all hear that? Let, let's go back. Jury tampering is, is like illegal, right? Jury pool tampering, jury tampering. Okay, let's 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 repeat a fair jury here we know they can and we've we've actually asked and done the interviews ourselves this has been public information now this posted when when 17 hours ago as of the time that i am recording my reaction to this isn't this illegal? How come the state's not stepping in for this one? So they throw a hissy hole fit whenever the defense is doing legit actual work like work that is done commonly in cases of this caliber this is what happens there are change of venue surveys or arguments for change of venue this is very 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 common so bill thompson is going to throw a whole hissy fit and and just stomp the whole freaking brakes on the defense doing a normal 
blank, anonymous, definitely non-threatening survey. But the Consolvices are out here telling the public on national TV that they are calling people in the potential jury pool and getting their opinion on it. What the hell do you think they're going to tell the family, knowing the family wants it to stay where it's at? Are we for real? Why is there not something happening about this situation? Santa should be just as upset about this as he was about the survey. This is wild to me. Okay, let's continue. To find 12 people plus some people on the side, you know, some substitutes. But yeah, they can find 12 no, people they that can't. have made their Quit mind. Lying. It's yeah, not hard. Made, that, Quit the cap. It's not that hard. Yeah. Um, I just, I just don't, I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't see that being that hard at all. They have one expert. You don't see that being that hard at all. You have people from across the oceans sending you gifts and flowers and mementos and keychains and photos and putting hearts and letters on places and sending you all the love and all the support from literally every single corner of this planet. You don't see how this is going to be impossible. You don't see how this is going to be hard. <sighs> okay. Okay. That says you can call the jury and they can still remain, you know, not contaminated, not biased. And then you got another expert that says once they hear something, they never can get it out of their head. So, you know, you can weed those people out. But what did you just do? You just admitted to doing the exact same thing that you're now complaining about. <sighs> Hypocrisy, bro. Just through the jury selection and say, hey, you know, if you read that vigil, let us know. And you can weed these people out. And yeah, I don't even think it's fair, but, you know, for the sake of the case, you know, you can get those people. You and don't remove think them what's and let's fair. just say that they are some kind of bias. You don't think it's fair that people that have been emotionally supportive of you should be excluded from the jury? That's one of the big red flags of a reason why they should be excluded from the jury, Steve. That's how it works. They are so adamant about just getting this done and over with because I think that they are trying to wrap this up so they can file a civil suit against the university. They've been eyeballing the university and stuff for a long time now. And like I've mentioned, I find it really, 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 really weird, really weird that Steve was so open to more of a possibility of answers here. Even if he couldn't let go of Brian being involved somehow, he was open to more suspects. And we've already talked about the ICR rules that they are not excluding from this case that make me believe that there is somebody else involved in the background of this. There's definitely something bigger going to be exposed come trial. But they want this over with so they can move forward with what they already plan on doing. Because the more information came out that retracted all of the so say evidence that they had against Brian, the more Steve went away from that open mindedness and really started focusing on this is the answer. And I don't understand how that's the case because that feels like oppositional behavior. It feels like he should have been like that whenever they were still not being told that there was false statements about social media rumors and all the other things that we have found out, okay? But now that the state is literally admitting, hey, that was a false statement. There, there was no connection or social media stalking. That wasn't true. Oh, and by the way, the stalking other allegation of actual physical stalking, that, that's a false statement as well. Even though they've been pushing that whole Instagram narrative, the Consolvices have been pushing that Instagram narrative this entire time, even now that the state, the people that are on their side are coming out and saying, yeah, bro, no, that's not true. His behaviors are not showing me that he is, he's not reacting the way that he should be. He's doing the opposite instead of being like, okay, we're now realizing they don't have enough evidence to really tell us that this is the right guy. So we really do have to be more open-minded here and look at other possibilities because there's something missing. And we can't risk this case going cold if they go through this entire thing and Brian's found to be not guilty. Then what? With the house now destroyed. That's my biggest concern here when it comes to the inconsistencies and the lack of actual proof. Because that is a big possibility. Lots of us believe that. But I feel like their motivations have shifted quite a bit. Now, I do believe they still want justice for their child. I'm not saying that that's still not a big, huge part of this. But they've seen now over two years almost how much attention this gets them. I'm just saying it's very obvious. This is why it's victims only. 
in these situations because you never can trust what the actual motivations or in you know intentions are with the families and they might be pure at first until they get a taste of what it's like to have all this attention on you and then things shift it happens almost every time but that's why i think that they're more adamant now about just like hounding down and getting this over with which i do agree with i wish the gag order was lifted i wish we could get this over with but when steve makes statements like how the state is still having issues trying to connect brian and now he knows all these other things but he's still out here like this, that's not doing this case any justice. It's not doing Kaylee or Maddie or Xana or Ethan any justice either. And I am not trying to be some sort of a-hole. I am being as honest, as blunt as I humanly possibly can. I just know that it all falls on deaf ears, which I also understand, but that's why I can make these statements because I know that I'm not in their shoes. I've been close to being in their shoes, but I'm not in their shoes. And I can look outwards and say, okay, you are being very one-sided. It's understandable. I understand where your emotions are. I completely mentally understand it, but you are not mentally capable of decompartmentalizing the difference. And that's just the facts of these cases when it comes to victims' families. They're so adamant about everything they're being told by the police being true so that we can get to the bottom of everything and they can feel some sort of relief. It's never complete, but some sort of relief. So they want to trust what they're being told. But Steve hasn't trusted the investigation from day one. So now that he's just like hammering down on, oh, yep, this has got to be it. And yep, this is what it's got to be. And this is where we're going to go. And there's no other answers. That doesn't make any sense to me. It really is very confusing. Bias there, but you remove those and then you just move on. There's definitely people here, here, surprisingly, in this county, in this town that I would think don't don't know much about it. I mean, I believe that there are some people, you know, there's a lot. She made it sound as if she personally knew people that didn't know much about it. But if you knew them, then they definitely would know a lot about it. So I'm not sure. I don't know. Like they, they're not from there. They don't live there. She she never even went to the house. She admits that several times that all of the times that the girls were at school there. And even though Kaylee had apparently only technically moved in over the summertime from what we've been told so far, Maddie had lived there for quite a while. And we know that Kaylee's address on a police report of her trying to say that she might have seen a missing woman at the time. This is an old story. Everybody knows about a Walmart sighting that she reported in because she thought she saw a missing woman. So she wanted the police to know about it. They put a report in and she used the King Road address as her address on this report. So I don't know, really. It's kind of strange. But we've been told this whole time that she moved into the King Road house over the summer. But Maddie's been there for a while. And even though all those months went by, Christy never went to the house before all of this happened. So if you've never even gone to the house, how can you sit there and say that you know how the residents are in that area? You have no idea. You legitimately have no clue. And if you know now, it's because they've reached out to you or they're they're more uh, concerned about you. So you're more recognizable to them. So you're being talked to more to them. But that just means that they're too tainted to be on the jury pool. I, I'm not try, I'm, I'm telling you, I know that it sounds like a whole lot of more complicated than it really, really is. But this family, I understand that the inconvenience is going to be horrible. I get that too. But they are just way too tunnel visioned to be out here making a public statement. This is going to technically put more pressure on the case because the public doesn't want to see the victim's family dissatisfied with something. It's actually going to make them dislike Brian Koberger a whole lot more because that's just how human emotions work. I'm really not trying to like be too harsh. I know that I've had a lot of really deep and maybe some people think harsh thoughts. I don't believe so. I believe it's honest and a lot of people are not honest with people, which is why they continue their behaviors Being honest is really the only way to be because it stops the insanity before somebody thinks something is okay when it's not. In the end, the truth is the only thing that actually matters here. And for them to be out here just openly claiming to the public, I'm just befumbled by it, that they're out here calling people. Now, I want to reiterate here, it doesn't say, and they are not saying how they are contacting these people. I keep saying they're calling, they're calling, they're calling, okay? But they're either calling people or they're going door to door and knocking on people's doors and asking them personally, or they're going shopping in town or doing errands in town or going to Moscow or different places inside of Laytel County and purposely putting themselves physically in front 
of the freaking jury pool. Okay. So they're either calling or they are physically interacting with these people or, or, or what they're doing it on Facebook. They're asking people that are local on Facebook, what they're doing. Are they reaching out to people via private message because they live in that area? One way or another, they are contacting these people. Either way is sketchy. Either way would make me completely freaking uncomfortable. And either way should be something should be being done. I'm not going to change my mind on that. This is completely unacceptable. And the fact, again, that they are so just comfortable coming out and saying that on national television, knowing damn well that they're going to play it for billions of people to see and hear and discuss for weeks on end. Like, seriously, guys. They are either contacting them via internet, via phone somehow, or physically, whether it be in public or whether it be door to door knocking and literally doing it for real like that. Either no matter which way you decide how they're doing this because they're not telling us how, it's not cute, it's not okay, and I would not be okay with it if I was a citizen of that area. I'm just saying. That is so insane to me, guys. I am just, I can't let that go. People that don't watch TV, they don't come into town a lot. They have farms. They kind of stick to their own. So I... I See, now I, that's going back to the same comment Steve made before about how they need a juror that's a farmer because this is such a technically, like, data-driven case that they need somebody who's, like, illiterate. We all remember what that whole thing was. And she basically just doubled down on that statement. See it being pretty easy for them. They just got to find them. Do it's going to be pretty easy to find some dumb farmers. That's all I'm getting from them. I'm sorry, but that's how I'm getting it both times I've heard something out of both of their mouths about it. I feel like your voices are being heard in terms of their the, voices are, the prosecution. Before they answer this, let's just re let's remind ourselves of this. Their voices are the only ones being heard. And them knowing that, you know, you would prefer it to stay. We have made it very clear to the prosecution how important it is to us, and they have reiterated it to us that, that they are passing that information on to the judge and that the judge does consider that. Yeah, and they've but shared stuff how like... How much it weighs, we don't know. They, they've shared stuff like the, the reason that he's not in an orange suit and in shackles is to keep this local media unbiased. They've done everything that they can possibly do to treat him. Lots of people go into court on TV in a suit without being in. Are we really back on this conversation? Why do they keep bringing this back up? This is something that was talked about well over a year ago because they kept making statements about his suit. Him as if I call it a white call, you know, white collar crime. Yeah. But, you know, this person's killed four people. He should be shackled. But there what do you mean? You don't know that, Steve. Innocent until proven guilty, remember? You yourself are telling people that the state is having issues putting Brian as the guy, connecting Brian to the case. So how are you sitting here publicly claiming he killed four people? There is no actual physical proof of that. If you actually get down into the details, there's no proof of that. We've gone over touch DNA. I really wish somebody would educate them on touch DNA. They're not going to listen to me. If they even know who I am, they probably hate me, which fair. Okay, fair. But somebody needs to sit down, Chris McDonough, and teach them about touch DNA so that they get the real realistic thing about this. Now, I will say this, okay? I regret whenever I was invited to do the interview with Crime Sleuthin so that she could talk to Kara. So, okay, again, she set that whole thing up, and then I was invited to join it, and I joined it so that someone was there for Kara. I regret when she was talking about the DNA that I didn't try to explain it to her more. I just felt like it wasn't my place at the time because it wasn't my interview. It was not my channel. I wasn't trying to overtake anything. I just, I just did it. Now I should have made things more clear and I also should have taken some time maybe and talked to her in the background about it, but then she ended up back in jail. And I also like stepped away from that whole thing because of all the crazy drama that happened around it. And I'm so done with all of that stuff. 
So I should have maybe said a little bit more, but again, it wasn't my channel. So it wasn't my place to just like butt in and overtake stuff. And I had no idea what she was going to be asking Kara, which again is Xana Kernodal's mother. I didn't know what she was going to be asking her, showing her. I didn't know they were going to be talking about the DNA. I wasn't aware of any of the conversation that was going to be had, but I do regret not teaching her more about the touch DNA. Like I've come out and explained to you guys in different videos. We've had several discussions about it. Chris McDonough talks to these people personally. He has an obligation, much more than I do, because he's an actual detective that spent all this time on the force and has all of these contacts, okay? He should be doing them real justice by teaching them or having somebody that is an actual forensic scientist that he knows from all of his real life experience teach the consolvices about the basics of the reality of touch dna they should be being told about all of these cases that there are out there where someone was literally put as guilty on death row or put in there for life or spends 20 30 40 50 years in prison for something that they ended up not doing their DNAs are found at the crime scenes on the bodies of the victims and they are innocent. I just wish that somebody would sit down and really teach them, hey, I need y'all to understand this because as much as we're having trouble connecting Brian to the case, I know y'all think this touch DNA means something, but I really need to explain it to you because it doesn't mean as much as you think it does. And I, again, I am really trying to be as like low level emotion wise with this whole thing, maybe this comment will reach them. I don't know. Okay. I don't know, but I really wish somebody, Chris McDonough <laughs> would be more realistic with these people. They deserve that much. They deserve that much from us. They deserve that much from us. What was the strategy for that? And that's to keep it here and to keep people from being, you know, prejudging. And I think that they've done a good job and, uh, the media also helps. You know, people understand where we stand. The media causes a lot of problems and spreads a whole crap ton of misinformation. And they don't retract it. They don't retract it, which is the worst part. People are upset, though, when they see that, that he is innocent. Yes. It bothers mm -hmm. people. For sure. For sure. A lot. I mean, you've we got did. lawyers yeah, that time. have been lawyers and own their own the, the case. He, he is shackled. We have been told he is shackled at the knees, yep. but yeah, his suit covers it mm -hmm. and he's always nice and clean shaven. And that's apparently part of the, you know, agreement to help in, in the long run, which we're here now at the long run of changing the venue. And there's also the gag order, you know, that's all to keep everything on lock. And, um, otherwise it was keep, pointless. Yeah. It was completely pointless. The yeah. gag order should be lifted. The gag order should definitely be lifted. It's a waste of time and it's the biggest issue in this entire case. That's why it's insane. That's why it's absolutely out of control. I remember seeing you all in court that first time um, and, and what that was like, you know? And, and I mean, does it feel any different now? It's, it's just such a small courtroom and you're so close to him. So close to him. I hate it. I, could, I didn't sleep last night. I'm like, I feel like, like, so much uh, shock has worn off at, um, at this point that it is even more real. Um, I feel like those early on court cases, it was just easy breezy. And now I'm like, ah. Okay, so I will say, since she's so convinced in her mind that Brian is the guy that did this, I understand where she's coming from. I understand it because whenever my ex would get out of jail before we moved and he got out of jail, there it was at least like three to four nights after that. Then it was just completely sleepless because I didn't know what he might try to do. I was just really paranoid. My anxiety was really bad. I could feel it deep down in like my being. Okay. So if they actually slept in Moscow the night before court, which they probably did because it was at 9 a.m. their time, that's pretty early. I understand exactly how she's talking about that. She probably felt sleeping in the same town with him in the jail pretty close because how she feels about it, I get that. I, I totally get that. You know, it just is really hard for me mentally. And because um, I just feel like I'm becoming more and more mental aware, like by the day, like I'm w coming out of this, you know, haze um, of uh, in reality, That's it's good, just though. becoming more and more real every court date that we go to, you know, I mean, maybe, maybe that's true for her. And maybe it'll help maybe open her eyes and make her a little bit more open minded.
if that's true and she's really you know coming out of a shock then maybe she'll sit back and start maybe really looking i was hoping steve would be the one to keep that you know that vibe that he had in the beginning where he was really questioning what the police were saying and wanting to make sure that everything was validated verified and made sense but now he's just i don't even know i just don't really know how else to explain it when time goes on and on and it's hard it gets harder for me is yeah. it hard uh like not to, not to look at him or do you try to just listen to what they're they're saying or? i look at him i just i i you know especially when he walks in you know well, I'll look right at him. I'm just dying for him to look over, make eye contact. Yeah, that's where the suit and being treated like a preferable prisoner, you know, it, it, it gets you because this person's done the most horrendous thing to your, to your daughter and, and they're getting treated better than, than a normal criminal would be. And it doesn't make a lot of sense for you. And you put up with the uh, punishment because you're hoping that it'll justify the means and we'll keep it here. But if they don't keep it here, then put them back in the orange suit and treat them like a normal criminal. Thanks for watching. Put them back in the orange suit and treat them like a normal criminal if they don't keep it here. Steve, again, I understand, okay? But we have no proof that Brian is the guy that did this. None. And again, I really wish people that have the background that you would trust and believe in what they're telling you would do you guys right and actually sit y'all down and tell y'all the facts i really wish that they would instead of following this media narrative just because they get called to go and be a on on a show for 45 seconds and get yelled at by nancy grace so instead of doing the right thing they keep the narrative to each their own i guess again i'm not surprised at all that they're out here with no qualms whatsoever admitting that they're out here calling people in Lataw county and interviewing them like he's already been reprimanded by the feds so he just doesn't learn i i guess typical man i don't know let me know what you guys think about this insanity down in the comments if you like the way that i present this information and give my opinion please do not forget to leave a like on your way out and subscribe to the channel if you were not subscribed already and don't forget to leave your notification bell on all so you don't miss any of my rants, reviews, reactions, updates, or deep dives. See y'all.